Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sun Us Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm Sweetie with a Y. And I'm Sweetie with an IE. And it's December, which means we might do a Christmas movie, but not tonight. <laughs> not tonight, <laughs> folks. You're not ready for the holiday jams yet. Uh, just not ready. Also, we don't have very many left, so we really got to save them for when it gets a little closer. And we don't like Christmas movies. What? Speak for yourself. Now you like them because you have a boyfriend. What the and fuck is that? Mean? And you're happy. You're mean. But before, Did you learn anything from this movie? Listen to old our old <laughs> other years when you didn't have a boyfriend. We were very mean to Christmas. We were. Yes. That's interesting. <laughs> I did I'm gonna say. Do, I'm going to start doing a new thing on this podcast where every time I bring up like a, a past podcast, we'll like put in the sound effect music like doodly, 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 and then I'll play the clip from that podcast so everyone can hear it. Okay. I think it'd be really funny. I will confess. I did text to my my mother really this week when we got a christmas tree and decorated it christmas is very fun when you're in a couple <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's true guys everyone should get a significant other no um you know there's not a lot of christmas movies left so we'll have a uh, well, at least one more to do um maybe two maybe, maybe two. two but for now we're just keeping on with the regular movies which today certainly a regular movie Certainly a good huh. movie. Yeah. Certainly a teenage, a teenage movie. movie. The movie is Never, Never Been, Been Kissed. Kissed. Which was on Disney Plus until like yesterday. Hey. I'm so pissed. Confession, guys. What? You've never, never seen been this? Kissed. Oh. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> um, I feel like you haven't seen it because you were like, oh my God, at like, <laughs> like moments that we've seen like a million times, you seemed very shocked by the loser stamp you were like losing it i was like hello have you seen this i no i have definitely seen it once whether what? it was like a viewing where i got up to go to the bathroom a bunch of times because i don't remember some of the scenes probably because that's you what it felt like to me out with your at your In prom? 1999 absolutely not um you're right you're right well it was would have been on video so it could have been any number of years after. yeah i don't know like it so many this felt like a very uh, when this came out. Like I remember the trailer and I remember like certain scenes from it very clearly. So that was on all the time. But I I definitely have seen it all the way through, and I think it is an adorable film in many ways. You know, I'm not the biggest Drew Barrymore fan mm -hmm. by any means, but gosh darn it, she's just adorable and is like so likable and just feels very real to me in her like quirky little way. Mm. And I really think that comes out very strongly in this film. That's so true. So true. Um, so yeah, I saw this movie at some point in middle school, I think um, immediately drawn to it for several, several reasons. Number one, um, Mickey from together is in this, which my friends and I were obsessed with. So we love, you that. weren't obsessed with him. No, but we loved we were okay. loved together, and we thought it was the funniest thing that like he was also in this or whatever. I don't know, uh, but we were we're really into this movie. We loved the end with everybody dressed up. We went as Barbies one year for like the Halloween dance at in middle school. Um, I just had like a very nice relationship with this movie. I really liked it. It was cozy. But now, when you get older, you're like, oh, this is a little creepy. Like I feel like there's a lot of wrongs totally. here. Totally. That people aren't addressing at the baseball field at the end. No one is like, wow, this is great, except creepy because she was in, he was in love with her while she was a student. I know nobody seems to be like batting an eye at that, that whole thing. Right. And like, I find it, his reactions to her, and we'll talk about this probably more later, so over the top. 
Like he's not hiding them at all. Like even if you have a crush on your student, like yo, oh, yeah. like I have tone a it down. laundry list of problems I have with Mr. Coulson that we'll get to later. Oh, yeah. But wow. And I, I'm glad it all worked out for him. And he felt like sort of regretful that he was like falling in love with a 17 year old. But still, ick. Ick. Double ick, double x x. A lot of he's cute. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people in this. Obviously, Drew Barrymore, David Arquette, uh, I have Lily Sobolewski. You can get all. Check. You know, she's the. Uh, she was kind of like the it, it girl of yeah, like what happened independent her? shit or something. I want to say. Where did also, she go? Like, crazy Helen Hunt look like Lily. Uh-huh. I know. Oh my god. I know. So weird. All right. Who else do you got? Uh, Molly Shannon. Yep, so funny. Love her. Love that bitch. John C. Riley. Love that bitch. Octavia Spencer. Underutilized. What? Uh, James fucking Franco, who is one of like the no name boys that hangs out with Guy. First movie, guys. Looks like he's it really goes, straight out of like, the nursery. I so I've seen this movie, you know, upwards of twenty wow. times. I don't know. I'm just guessing. It's a casual guess, but I. Didn't had no freaking clue that James Franco was in this, which makes me feel like he's forget like he's forgettable, right? Well, he only has like two lines, as you said, right? But like, I feel no like personality in other movies. You have these other the other boys. He's just like another face in the crowd. Like yeah. it's so weird that now it's like James Franco. You know, like how that just switches. How did that transition? It's weird. Um, Jessica Alba, same thing. Except you recognize her because she has star power. Let's just say. Um, I think she's annoying. She is, but I mean, like in terms of like a a memorable face, she's not a face in the crowd. That's what I'm saying. Um, Gary Marshall, good cameo as the crazy mean uh, newspaper boss who's basically Harvey Nuts, whatever from A League of Their Own. Um, Just reminds me of it's like a similar character. Harvey Bars. His last name was Harvey. Harvey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Harvey. Yeah, Mr. Harvey. Reminds me of him. Uh, what else? Uh, Who did I miss? Uh, so the uh, pedophile, pedophile, is Michael Vartan. Hmm. Uh, if you remember, he was pretty big during this time. He was in Alias as Jennifer Garner's Sidney Prescott's boyfriend. Everyone Isn't was like, Sydney oh. Sidney Prescott scream? Oh, no. Sidney <gasps> something. Sorry. Bars. Sidney's boyfriend. Uh Real, everyone like loved him, and he is like very, gen- like very generically cute. I would say, um, cute face. You'd put him in a, yeah, lead- a leading man role. He's fine. And then remember this actress Marley Shelton, who I feel like was kind of an it girl of the '90s. She was in Pleasantville. She's the blonde. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna. She's look her uh, up. Sandlot. Yeah. Um, She's in the lifeguard in yes, Sandlot. Yes, yes. She's in that movie Sugar and Spice yeah. also, which I love, which is we should watch. It's so really big like nineties that girl. Uh, yeah. miss that bitch again. Wait, are you afraid of the dark? Are you was she in that too? Dark? Which one? The blonde one. Were the people around the campfire? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh. Maybe not. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Okay. Anyways, yeah, a lot of people. So many yeah. people in this. Very impressive. So apparently learned today that this is actually a remake, loose remake, of a nineteen forty two movie called The Major and the Minor. Okay. We're not sure if it's a porno Got or not. It. This is even sketchier than the plot of this movie. Buckle your fucking seatbelts. So the movie stars Ginger Rogers. Cool. Famous dancer, right? She is a, um, I forgot. She's in her 20s or something like that. And she gets on a train, but like doesn't have enough money to ride. So she pretends to be 12 to like get a free ticket. (laughs) Goes and then like hides in this cabin with this like major of the army or something. This guy and his like fiance. But then the major and and her really like hit it off. And he's like having so much fun, but he's trying to remember that she's only 12. Sick. Ew. Ew. Even worse. Ew. That's so creepy. So interesting though. Creepy. Didn't know that. Well, I appreciate the way they changed it, updated it, made it a little bit less creepy. Still, I think creepy. We'll get into that. Um, but yeah, overall thoughts upon your rewatching of this. Um, so this movie's from 1999. So yes, right before the millennium. Millennium. Uh, big theme of this movie because waiting for tonight. They wanted the uh, prom to be the millennium. The theme. millennium. Um, any thoughts? Um, you know, it's an adorable movie. Again, like basically you put Drew Barrymore in any movie as like an adorable character and it's going to sell the fucking movie. Mm-hmm. So I think that 
even if it's like not that great of a movie, it's still really good because like she's in it. It has a good mix of really thoughtful stuff and really like stuff to think about. Mm. So, you know, we've covered in this podcast through the generations here, guys, basically the same theme of cool kids and nerdy kids and what happens to them and why cool kids are so mean you, but like yeah. why do those cool kid? why do the nerdy kids want to become cool kids and how bad like how bad do they want it and stuff like that like that's been such a theme whether we're talking about like 70s 80s 90s like 2000s like it's kind of exhausting mm. um but i thought this one was re- done really well um it had again like a lot of thoughtful moments but also some um slapstick some yeah. clever sure uh-huh. Some clever uh-huh. stuff. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, so other than like the pedophile stuff. <laughs> soup, soup's adorable. I'm down for it. The ending is fucking adorable. When she describes what a kiss is like, whoa. I don't know if I've had one like that. Oh, God. Well, not like a stop yeah. the world moment. Well, I think Nowadays, se- it's just like, oh, well, let's hook up before we have sex. Like, it's not like romantic. Well, I mean, it depends on who it's with, but... And there, I will say that's not going to happen like every kiss you have with every person or every every kiss with your significant other. But I think there is sometimes just, you know, and they might even be with people who you don't even end up with. That's the crazy thing. But I think hmm. it can be exciting. A kiss is a powerful thing. Oh. Don't you forget that. Good for you. And your boyfriend. Hey. Um, <laughs> I haven't kissed anyone in 13 years. Really? <laughs> well, I don't know. Um... <laughs> This movie is about I, <laughs> let's make a reality show where this is it's like this movie, but you don't never go been back to kissed high in twenty years. Yeah. 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 Fine. Anyways, okay. Yeah. I think it's still adorable. I think it still holds up. Uh so I'm excited that we get to talk about it because I feel like I have a lot to say. I didn't think I did when we started the movie, but then I was like, Whoa, two pages of notes. Whoa. On a big notebook. Like whoa. I got stuff to say. <laughs> well, you should have that notebook all the time. Look at well, that. Well, actually the second page is really just a list of all the couples at the dance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so was maybe, that necessary? <laughs> maybe there's a count. Yeah, you love lists. <laughs> love lists. Do. You do. Okay. Let's do this. It's time for the sweetie synopsis. Yes. Yeah. Sweeties. I'm not Josie Grossy anymore. Yikes, bikes. Josie Geller is a 25-year-old copy editor working for the Chicago Sun-Times, but she desires to be a reporter, and she just can't get there because she doesn't have the goods, you know? I mean, they say this, I mean, pretty sexist. They're, like, only taking ideas from, like, gross men who want to wear hair plugs and stuff, and she's got real ideas, but nobody thinks she can do it because she's, like, a little mousy and, you know, like, she's not young. super young. confident, and she's the youngest person at the Chicago Sun-Times or something, whatever. So <clears throat> she gets a big break one day when the old newspaper head guy, you know, Gary Marshall, starts like crying about, oh, like uh, my kid had a, almost died because he ate a peanut and I didn't even know he had a peanut allergy. And like, why don't we know our kids today? And I'm like, dude, just you don't know your yeah, kids. Why, <laughs> like, why you bring, why you bring this all into this? Allergy. I think Sketchy. I would know if my son had a peanut allergy. Thank you very much. But... So it's like, okay, and then for some reason that morphs into an idea that he wants to put a reporter undercover in the high school to see what the kids are up to today. I have so I have so many questions on how this is just casually done these days. Like, how do you register at a school, you think? How does that what is that process? Yeah. Do your like parents have to go in with you? That's what I would think. And like what kind of docs do you need? Like I'm just like very skeptical. You must need your like records from your previous school, maybe? I guess, but like it just people seem to just like go into the school one well, second I have two, and then uh, two come real out. life examples after what? we'll bring up at the end you all around a... movies, but oh. you know people did it for a movie. Um, you know we've talked about previously. Oh, <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you went like other movies or, where this happens. I was like that doesn't count. So like, I'm no. Talking about logistics here. No, no, no. Okay, great. I'm super into that. I think I know which, what one of them is. Okay, don't spoil. Um, for I just have to think about it for a little while, but I'll remember. Anyways, so she gets to go back to school which she's excited about because she didn't really have the most successful time in high school when she was growing up here's what happened to her she underwent severe psychological damage from bullying in her high school i feel really bad i think that especially in today's times with the bullying you know the bullying edge like these scenes are really uncomfortable and sad and you feel you really feel for her and they do a good job of not making her of Making her her nerdy and like somebody you're like, ooh, yeah, I probably would have maybe made fun of her. 
when I was that age, I don't know, but also she's super sweet and you can, you immediately know she's a good person. So I don't know. There's just a lot of empathy that just, you know, radiates, radiates off there. Yeah. And like bullying is something that obviously is like through, again, gen, like through the generations that shit like doesn't end. And it's such a different form now because I really think it's taken a bit out of like pranks like this one does. So they pour like spray in her backpack they put toilet paper like on her backpack. Egg her. I was gonna ask her. her to prom. Yeah, I mean that egg was like kind of like, the big awful. one. So it's obviously been taking a lot more like virtually now. So that's uh, better or worse. Who knows? Uh, but there's you know it's just seem to such a bad time. <laughs> high school, middle school, and high school. <laughs> Why don't you like my virtual <laughs> bullying song? <laughs> bullying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious topic, I sweetie. Know, I just, it really made sense. He said to, to take it virtually. No, I'm going to say. Uh, so bullying does not stop because nope. pe- you're in a time in your life where you're going to have people trying to think they're better than you because they're really more insecure, right? Mm-hmm. You have basically a, just a pool of insecure people. And some of those insecure people, like any sort of like group dynamic, there's always going to be these assholes who are like, mm, you know what will make this even better? If I like make someone else to make myself feel better. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's a very strange thing. Yeah. But it just happens in these like kind of dynamics. So it, it is very sad. And but like my feeling about Josie was that I felt like she was like still a nerd in her job but she liked it and I thought her life was Cause she, happy yeah because she like knew who you got the sense that she knew who she was yeah. but I feel like I guess she was still feeling unfulfilled and missing something until that until the end well I think mostly because of the boy issue right because yeah. she's she you learn that she's never been kissed so never been physically intimate with anyone and that I think is the one regret that she has from high school so maybe I think as most people do learn you get out of high school and you're like why was I fucking obsessed with being popular like those kids were losers mm-hmm. the whole concept is like so fucked up and usually those kids end up like never leaving your podunk town and like being drug addicts you know do yourself a favor do not be popular in high school it probably will set you up like very badly but she yes she embraced her nerdiness so what she's like very smart she goes to northwestern she becomes this youngest copywriter Mm -hmm. in the history of the newspaper dresses like a mormon right Uh, okay cross stitches pillows that's that's not great but like cross stitching turtles who was what's a pet turtle that's great i mean i'm glad they they put the cat lady uh spin you know they did a spin on the cat lady story now she's crazy turtle turtle lady seem a lot cooler um i guess i mean like what do they do they don't do much can you take them out of that tank i don't know do they need water? I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, so uh, she goes back to high school. Go so back. rookie mistake. She, you know, kind of forgets what mm, decade it is or just didn't know what the kids were wearing these days because she shows up looking like a member of ABBA. OK, so if she was. So, yeah, I don't she's know. 10 why. years. She's probably only 10 years older. So 25 no, even less, less than that. So eight years. It's not like that dramatic. Seven years older. It's but it's not that dramatic of a fashion shift, right? From her high school when she was in high school, which they portray as being like very eighties. Yes. And then the outfit they pick for her, her and her work friend Anita, who's a little slutty, um, but if, but good for her. I love her. Um, she kind of convinces her to wear that so is it anita's style or was it like josie's interpretation of what kids today would like to well wear? anita has sort of a, yeah a weird slutty style she basically was like lingerie all the time she's also older okay the dates don't match up here because she's 25 so she would have been in high school so she's only seven years older right mm-hmm. so seven minus 1999 is 1992 huh that was not, and she was like very 80s, like the wedding singer 80s. Like her prom drap, dress was so Yeah, 80s. it was so 80s. So that was, that's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of anyway. weird. So, I mean, well, maybe this whatever. didn't take place in 1999. Maybe this is just when the really movie came out. We don't weird. know, like, you know, okay, the actual true. date. True. We're really splitting hairs here. Um, but anyway, so she does trade her car in. She's like some, you know, mom car. Buick. And Le trades Saber. her, uh, her older, or sorry, younger brother, Rob, who works at the Tiki in the Tiki hut? Tiki 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 Post, post. in the Tiki 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 tiki, tiki, tiki Post, which is a mail store? M A I L everyone. Yeah. 
That is also a luau. I don't know. Confusing. Yeah, it's like a place you buy like postage and like package supplies. I think in and then, Chicago, and then you can mail, <laughs> and then you can mail it. It's like a FedEx, but like not. But so it's a tiki post. Rob was really cool in high school, and he has a cool car. So she steals that, dresses in a feather boa, tons of white eyeshadow, and walks into school. Is like and maybe white lipstick and white lipstick, yeah, or total frosty like <laughs> situation, and is like I'm gonna be the coolest kid here. Does not work out well, well because she has the mentality of like cool and thinks she's cool, but that's not how high school works. And it immediately sends her back into like a panic uh, resurgence of trauma spiral PTSD. from her bullying days. Yeah, definitely PTSD. She's like vomiting. She's so worked up like that's bad. So she's not she's not being so successful she does find a super hottie like her first day which debatable hottie here guys but his name is guy first of all uh raper total raper he's just a raper face like i hate i hate that guy i hate him so much i need everybody's thoughts on guy and how he's a raper face stat uh and she has a, a cute english teacher sam coulson uh who seems real sweet and the ladies love him maybe but really just josie but immediately he notices Josie is like smart and he, I feel like he's attracted to her like immediately, which is really creepy. And if it's just that she's he's attracted to like her maturity, like I feel like her friend Ald, Aldi's or whatever. <laughs> what is her name? Yeah. Aldi's? Yeah. Aldi's? Her mother was like reading romance <laughs> novels at the time. Is that like a romance novel I name? Know. I don't know. I honestly had no yeah. fucking clue what her Weird. name was in this movie. And until she said it, I was like, what the fuck? But like, anyways, if that was the case, like, wouldn't he just have had a crush on her? Like, if he's attracted to people's like brains? Yeah, I think he like immediately had like saw her passion about Shakespeare and they had a lot in common and stuff like that. And then he could sense that she was at least an old Different. soul right um you know not necessarily like with her actual age yeah so she befriends um also this aldi character who is like, like the nerdy the grocery store aldi's yeah, right <laughs> uh is the very nerdy uh population of school that all the cool kids make fun of but she's pretty much that sort of i'm too cool for the cool kids nerd mm -hmm. basically yeah very free spirited yeah. lover yeah so she befriends her immediately and she asks josie does she, is she good at calculus do you want to join the math club Woo. Ooh. just like in mean girls yeah math club don't join There's the a math lot of mean club. girl s ishness yeah. about yeah. this movie so they're called the denominators and they wear like cool sweatshirts and they also provide she says like a sense of protection which is true because in high school like as long as you're in a group better than being yeah. in no group yeah, right sure. so even if it is like this nerd group at least she has like the power of them and someone to eat lunch with and like all that stuff true. so she does that and is still trying to come up with like a story because the whole point of this is that she needs to come up with like a sensational story for the newspaper and she's trying all these different angles because she's like uh, with the kids all the time and asking them all these questions so she's kind of getting like little angles about like oh the girls like um, well, this comes later, but they're like they they don't take the tags off of clothes and they just wear them and return yeah. them. You What's know, like, really in the school coleslaw? Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. So like stupid stuff like that. So her editor's like, you need something big, or this we're both gonna get fired. Mm -hmm. Like this is not gonna work out. Um, and then they slaps a camera on her. Slaps a camera on her, but then he wait. When does he figure out that the way he they got to be she's got to be friends with the popular people. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, part of that. He's like, you have to befriend these popular people. And then they put the camera on her the next morning okay. or whatever. So that, so that's the angle. So yeah. she's, and she's freaked out because that is the mission. She cannot be friends with popular people. Yeah, she doesn't um, work out. It hasn't worked out well for her so yeah. far. It did not work out well for her in the past. Yep. And, and she just doesn't know what to do. Well, so her brother gives her a tremendous piece of advice. Pep talk. And what is that? Um, you're not you're not Josie Gross anymore, which is okay. what they call her. You're not Josie Gross anymore, but also you just need one person. You just need one person to like you. Let's remember the rule of the golden can't buy me. Yeah. Love. Golden rule of popularity. What did Ronald Miller do to get into the cool kids paid? Uh, what's her face? Cin a Cindy. popular kid. Is her name Cindy? Yep. A popular kid money so that she would like him pretend to like him so that other people would like him and he become popular right so you just need one person one to person. like you yep and then 
the whole po- the popular kids are like lemmings as Aldi said basically if one person who's popular mm-hmm. likes something or says it's okay they don't even question it but I feel it. like it has to be like one of the upper popular people sure. like would it could it have been James Fr- James Franco was like hey this girl's cool I, I don't think they would no it has to be one listen of the to top. him Cindy yeah. Mancini and Can't Buy Me Love was one of the top she's the top top of the top of the top um, so they need they, she needs an in right mm-hmm. how does she get that in my fate really um you know, tries her best, but then no, no, not my fate. What? Yeah, Rob. Yeah, that's how she gets it. I know, but like she tries to, but she doesn't like come up with the idea. Rob decides to go there, right. so Rob decides to go and also apply to the school because apparently it's very easy to just to just do that. Registers. Well, he makes fake ID. Yeah, but what kind of ID? Like, did you have an ID when you Maybe were Maybe from a, like a fake school? license? I don't know. <laughs> um, but so now he's at the school and he's like, I'm going to help you. So really nice. Really good for him. Um, I think that was just a really like self. Yes. I, well, I would say selfless, but then I'm thinking mm. selfish. <laughs> oh, selfish. Oh, I thought it was nice because like he didn't do like he could have done that for her when she was in high school. They're only they would have been in high school together at the same time. Like he could have done this all for her in high school and helped her be popular and have people like her and not bully her. Like why wasn't but, he protecting her? Okay, well, he didn't do that in high school. I first know that's what all. I'm saying. So maybe this was so like a redemption. Bullshit. No, it was selfish because he figured out okay, right. I can go back and be this big baseball star. Yeah. Because you see, Rob is so, sort of a loser now. He's what I was just talking yeah, about. He's the opposite. Very yeah. cool in high exactly. school. Never really got out of that. I was so cool in high school. Big baseball mm-hmm. star. He had mono, and then something <laughs> happened. I don't know. And then he couldn't play in the state oh, yeah. championships and, and then he, nobody scouted him. Yes, exactly. So his ticket to glory now is to go back and play high school baseball and like then maybe scouts will come to the playoff game and like recruit him and they won't be like, wow, you're like yeah. way too old. I mean, it's a pretty good idea. And yeah. he helps Josie in the process. I mean, it's, yeah. it, could be, so, it could be more so, selfish. Okay, fine. Two words, on, one stone. But I think like he essentially, you know, was in it for himself and I will help Josie is like a B Maybe. A B side. Yeah. So he helps her and it's just like immediately starting to like spread rumors like, oh yeah, that's my old girlfriend. Like we used to go out. She was super hot and she dumped me and stuff like that. Pat does rumors about like who she dated, you know, a drummer from the big bad voodoo daddies because whoa, look whoa, out. Look out. Her dad um, invented la- uh, X-lax. X-lax. Yeah, we all like, love yeah, that. Wanting girls. Yeah. They're just so sh- immediately, basically she comes popular overnight and then falls in with the popular group, Kirsten, Kirsten, Libby. <laughs> Poor Libby. Why doesn't she get a Kirsten, Kirsten <laughs> name? Um, and she's popular all of a sudden. And who should notice her? But Guy. Guy, guy. whatever. And he asks her to the prom. <gasps> which is a little... Wanted. Yeah, it's what she's always wanted, but it's also a little triggering because back in the day, her crush also asked her out to prom, but it was all just a joke. So we find out that he asked her out and she gets all excited and then he's like, meet me outside. I'm pulling up in a limo. And he pulls up and then this blonde girl like gets comes out from the sunroof too. Like they're both like in the thing. And then they just start chucking fucking eggs at poor Josie. And she's crying. And then her mom's like, Josie, honey, is that you? And she's like, ah! and she runs away like into the night. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? She probably cried in a bush. Until when? Duration of prom. Oh my God. Yeah, it, it was very sad and just the... You know, just kids are so cruel. It's just like unbelievable that you would like have a good time and like would not feel any sort of remorse from that. Like you could be so cruel to somebody and then go enjoy your prom. Like, are those kids sociopaths? I don't know. Definitely sociopaths. But don't worry, it doesn't happen again. Yeah. She gets to go to prom for real. She looks great. She feels like a million bucks. She even fucking wins prom queen. Now, this whole time, there's been this secret, uh, weird romantic thing happening with her and Mr. Coulson where he just keeps doing like inappropriate things with her. Like he does some pretty inappropriate things. For instance, at the carnival, carnival, at the carnival, uh, Josie's alone and the guy's like, single, single here. <laughs> and he's like playing like a rigged carnival game and looks over and is like, oh, Chelsea, smile. She's all alone. I better save her. So goes over and like sits with her. I'm like, dude, no. She's just like, as a male teacher, you don't do that. Number two, 
flirty painting. Oh, they're like flirty painting. painting was the worst. Can you ever imagine happening that happening with a teacher? The thing is, it's like in Why? broad daylight at the school, which is where he works, that this is happening. Like we've all seen Lifetime movies, Lifetime original movies. Those these kinds of teacher things happen like off court, like right, <laughs> so that other teachers don't see it or other people. This is all happening. So they're like painting a mural, and they're like, and he like paints a little paint on her nose, like deep oop oop boop like oh god get the fuck out of here uh it's like weird socializing they like take a break during like prom setting up and sit together in these chairs and like talk about life stuff nice try you predator but then he's like trying to help her get into dartmouth she's like oh i'm not she's going to college for that. um and because she's already been to college secret um and he's like oh i talked to this uh connection i have a dartmouth i got you an interview and she's like whoa wow like thanks like i didn't ask for that but cool and he's and he's always just looking at her very like longing yeah like smiling and and being like oh my girlfriend and i broke up and And it's like you know like not that i'm saying it's any well it's it's definitely a different thing yes there are many people uh people have crushed on their teachers right like that is tales old this time um, especially the young hot ones, you know, because when you're in high school, there's always like one or two like kids, kids, sorry, uh, people, teachers right out of college. So mm-hmm. they were like 23, 24, 25, which I'm assuming this teacher is right. Mm-hmm. He's probably her probably. age, 25. Yeah. So that was always a little strange as a, a student because you're like, OK, you know, technically they're probably like 10 years older than me, but they. At 25, you still look like you could be in high school. Case in point, this movie, you can go back to high school. Mm-hmm. So that leap isn't there because you are so used to teachers who are like ancient that someone who looks even remotely like you as a student, you're like, ooh, like they're cute. So that's like always been a thing, right? Like I had crushes on teachers when I was in um, middle school, I remember, not really high yeah, school. Yeah, but she, I don't really think of her as like having a crush on him. You know what I mean? But she, like she acted <clears throat> much more appropriately than he did. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, I don't, it feels more that like he immediately just had a crush on yes. her and she was like, oh, he's cute. And maybe that's just that to that guy's acting and they should have been like, you need to be more yeah, subtle. Yeah, I just think you need to like <laughs> rein it in, rein yes. it in. Like so obvious, like slow dances with her at the prom. Right, what, what? the fuck? Gross. It's so weird. So, and then he's like all jealous when she's yeah. like dancing okay. with somebody else. Just don't even her get, date? I can't, yeah, I can't even, I can't even handle it. So, yeah, so that happens. She's prom queen. But then she sees her new friends, the popular people, try to, like, pour a can of dog food on her friend because they always call her Aldi. dog. Uh, <laughs> Alpo, they call her. Uh, yeah, they always call her Alpo because she's, like, dogs. She's a dog. Um, oh, I thought it was because of her name. Aldi Alpo. What? <laughs> That's why. I don't think they would have made that connection <laughs> because it's not like a, a similar. It's just like the same amount of letters and both starts with an A-L. I don't know. A-L. Um, I think it's because she's a dog. And they're like, she, she's they're like, like a dog. She's gorgeous. Yeah. They're always like, go back to the pound or something. I don't yeah, know. That's true. So um, she stops that from happening and then does her big like prom speech. Like you kids are crazy. Like you, one day, like after you leave this place, none of it, this will matter. And blah, blah, you know, says a lot of true things that is nice and when you are of a certain age and you go back and it's one thing to watch this movie when you haven't even been to high school yet right and you're like right. in middle school you're like oh wow oh, that's, so, a, like, that's did, a fun speech did, did you feel like that speech like made an impression on you or you're just and like turn me oh. into an awesome person maybe but it probably didn't have much resonance right. with us when we were when we were in middle school you were like watching in this it. yeah yeah i mean i teared up not that I had a difficult call, uh, high school experience at all, but just that like she was really very right as, yeah. as I was saying before. Like high school like does not matter, and it's such a shame because in your little world like it does seem like the end all yeah. end all, and you real you don't realize that you're gonna have like so many more experience outside of this little high school bubble. Right. Um. So yeah, it's good speech. Yeah, good speech. Good speech. But she also lets loose cat out of the bag. Oops, I'm 25, an she undercover to- reporter. And she then she also them. says Rob, like, is her brother and posed as a uh, teenager also. So then she kind of is like, I'm sorry, and then runs away. And then her, like, camera buddy, who, like, is the AV guy, I don't know, he has a van, um, is like, dude, what happened? We lost the feed because she ripped off her camera. And um, she's like, and he's like, did you get anything on Colson? She's like, no, because she didn't want to ever get stuff on him. Like, her boss was like, this is where the story's at. Teenage uh, student teacher romance, like taboo, you know, that's where it's, I mean, true. I mean, it's, it's true. true. 
I would have read that story. Yeah. That would have been, you know, easily they would have sold a lot of papers. But she's not into that. Unfortunately, Sam is listening nearby and thinks that like she was purposely trying to get him to like her so that he would make a move and then he would get in trouble, which is not true. And you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when people get mad at like sting operations. Mm. <laughs> They're like, I can't believe you would do this to me. I'm like you did the bad thing. Like I, this was just an opportunity for you to do the bad thing. Yeah. So like, why are you blaming this Thing, I don't know. It's just like, it really made me upset. Well, I oftentimes feel like in that situation, people think that like that person lying like trumps everything else. Like even though like that's yeah. like that's the, the main bad thing and then right. all those things uh, are like yeah. wouldn't have happened so if true. you hadn't lied and I feel like that's why he's more upset with her that like their whole relationship what relationship? was built on like, like a lie. Get fucked. <laughs> like what? <laughs> weirdo like oh our our flirty painting relationship and like all the time we spend in the ferris wheel <laughs> yeah like it's so weird yeah. uh anyway so he's mad at her she thinks she's lost like everything she doesn't they think she doesn't have a story because she blew it but she's like that's not true because i'm a pretty good writer and i'm gonna write a story so she writes a story using what she knows because somebody once told her you should write what you know which i feel like is a exact line in another movie maybe harriet the spy Oh, um, yeah. possibly but so she writes this like touching story of how she's never been kissed really she keeps saying like for reals and I don't know what that means like she, she get a kiss on the cheek she do like a kiss yeah. no tongue uh, I need to know the, the details of what her not really ever been kissed means. I mean maybe she was kissed as like little kids will just be like like doing little things blah 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 I don't think she's had like ever like a romantic this person likes me kiss that's what I'm thinking okay okay, okay. So she, at the end of this, like, apologizes and says, like, this one teacher, not saying any names, you know who you are, but, like, oh, I think I know who it is, and is like, listen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I did this, I'll make it, to make it up, like, I will be standing on the pitcher's mound five minutes before the first pitch, like, come and give me my first kiss or whatever. So they make this big thing of it, and everybody's all excited. Everybody's, like, perfectly okay with the fact that she, uh, you know, lied and is a student. I don't know if yeah. the, the newspaper pulled some strings to help her, like, not be in trouble, but, yeah. like, I'm not sure. Nobody seems very upset. Um, she's waiting on the mound. It's very exciting. They put the clock on the scoreboard, counting down, five minutes. Not very much time, if you think about it. But, you know, you have somewhere to be in fight. You know, she, there was a time, it was, like, you know, it's five minutes before well, the first pitch. Get and it they together. Keep showing the Sam guy, uh, the teacher, like packing. Who's, yeah, where well, is he it's going? Unclear where he's going because there was a point where he was going to move to New York City to be with his girlfriend, and then they broke up though. Yeah. So like, you don't think that's happening? But I'm like, are you still moving to New York City? I mean, I guess the school year had ended, so maybe he was like, see ya. But yeah, where was he going? So he's packing, and then the paper. So people are still reading the paper now. It's 1999, and he's using it. As I still do, actually. Yeah, as, packing you know, packing glasses. stuff, yeah. And, like, he keeps, like, putting a box over the article or, like, not seeing it. And then he's, like, p pulling out sheets of the paper and rolling up glasses in it. And then finally, like, the sheet with, like, the never been kissed headline and, like, pictures of her in high school and stuff is, like, right there. And then it's, like, movers. And he, like, goes and gets the door. And you're, like, what? Did he see it? I think he read uh, it before that. He had like five, oh. five different papers and saw one. But I'm earlier. sure, like he he picked up that next one hopefully and was like, oh shit. So that's I always what, thought he was, was just like, like debating whether or not to go, and that's why he was oh. late. But no, that's I don't know. So her? anyway, so the clock runs out and it's very sad, and everybody's like, oh, it would have been, been really great. The movie just ended like this, and it was like reality. Um, <laughs> but. People start hooting and hollering. Here comes Mr. Coulson running down the steps and runs out into the mound. And then they have that like great stopping time kiss that she describes perfectly in the beginning of the film. And they kiss and then they kiss again and then all is well. And oh, Rob gets to be the assistant coach mm -hmm. of the baseball team. Go, Rob. Um, and she gets, you know, she gets she gets a lot of things she wanted. She gets a kiss. She gets cute boyfriend probably hopefully gets to be a reporter. Better wardrobe. Better wardrobe. Cuter hairstyle. I'll tell you. Just like instantly being friends with popular people means that you know immediately how to do your makeup, how to dress well, and how to do your hair. 
I don't get it. Yeah. Did they help her? I wish they oh. would have done like a, a makeup, yeah. like a, a movie, you know, a like montage, a makeover up. montage. Yeah. And maybe they did and they cut it out or something. Yeah. But I feel like this movie could have really benefited from that. Yeah. I will say. But yeah, that's the flick. Pretty good. And like, like aside from the creepiness, pretty sweet. Like if you just pretend for a second that he's not, wasn't her teacher, then it's okay. <laughs> I yeah, guess. I would rather them not again, like not have that emphasis on how much he was really liking her. That part just and I, you know, it kind of felt weird to me. I think when I saw this in the night, like when it came out, sort of too, hmm. I was like, that seems strange to me that he is okay with that and okay with showing her, not hiding the fact that he likes her and not you hiding know? the fact that he liked her in the past tense, like yeah. you know, because it's still the teachers are like, okay, but like if she wasn't by God's good grace, 25. Like, because you even what have, we have done here. I mean, so the other end of that is that her brother Rob starts dating the 16 year old and her, you know, she has to lecture him being like, he's six, uh, she's 16, you're 23. It's illegal. It's illegal. And then like, she's kind of having her own dalliance with like the 17 year old guy guy oh yeah that's true yeah so she couldn't really lecture him like too hard but like rob is like a stand-up guy compared to like the te- the teacher because he shuts that down like the girl yeah. like he'll he takes her to prom because he's like doing all that stuff but the girl is like i want to have sex with you and he's like okay yeah. like he's and just like, no. nope and is like not you know i mean who knows maybe they did other stuff i don't know but still that is a little bit different. I mean, he's kind of a re- regular guy. The age gap is still troublesome, but like teacher figure is always where it gets a little mm, sticky, right? Because yeah. even if you're close in age, that's just like not. No, it's a the great thing. it's the power dynamic, the yep. re- that whole you know angle of it, and your brain isn't fully formed when you're whatever, and you know that stuff. So yeah, it's icky, um, but that's. The way the cookie rumbles. Still a cute movie, guys. Still a cute movie, <laughs> aside from the pee to feel. Um, so, let's see. What do I want to talk about? Um, how about you type this password into the computer, because I can't do it, and I will <laughs> talk about uh, prom themes. So, I, this is one of the teen movies from the 90s that had, you know, emphasis on the prom, which we've seen in our other movies we've covered she's all that um 10 things i hate about you prom is always a spectacle so this school has like an annual prom competition with the competitor the like uh, rival school best prom and sweet and i are like how do you like determine best prom like oh who had the better punch like i don't know yeah. so apparently it's all about the theme the theme is everything darling so the theme they My pick this even year. have a theme. No, no prom has it. No, some proms have like a not a theme so much as like a mm, well, kind of a theme, I guess. Like ours was the way you look tonight or something. Oh, so it was like a oh, like just that. like a saying, like a saying. But it kind of is like the theme for decor. Some of the decorations, oh, yeah, the decorations and stuff like that, but not what you wear. Um, no, not what. Never what you wear. So, so this movie also has my other favorite '90s movie um, high school trope, which is that like student over the loudspeaker who's like the DJ. <laughs> so she seemed like she was the DJ, like Usher was the DJ, yeah. and she's all that. What are these schools that have these like all day announcements like maybe from this students? Is in the Midwest or the it's so weird. West, like I don't it's know, maybe East weird. Coast. Just, like, anyway, don't have so them. she's like, hey, important announcement, everybody. The votes are in for the prom theme, and the winner is the Millennium. <laughs> and she, <laughs> and I just am like, oh, okay. The Millennium is like the most boring theme in the world. Would would that have meant like tr- future, like computer stuff, right. like the Matrix, like what? What a dumb theme. If I if my prom was the millennium, I would have cut a bitch. <laughs> and I was pissed. So a bit later, we find out that the rival school is also doing the millennium. So everyone's like, oh, no, we need a new theme. And they come up with some themes. And Josie comes up with made for each other. Couples throughout time or whatever, mm-hmm. which is a really good theme. Really good job, Josie. Like she's, you know, they pay her the big bucks. Yeah. Maybe not for a reason, but um, good theme. Good theme. Uh, yes, much good, better good theme. theme. But honestly, I would be fucking pissed. The whole point of being going to prom is that you get to get you get to wear a gown for like the first time ever, unless you are in like a quinceanera or something like that. So it's very exciting. 
Like you get to wear a fucking gown. If I had to go to my prom in like a fucking toga because it was a costume thing, I would have been so okay, mad. But, I mean, that would only be if it was your choice to be somebody that would wear a toga. You could right. wear a very pretty dress like Josie wore. I mean, someone went as Eve. She literally had leaves on her of, boobs yeah, and crotch. There's a lot of questionable choices at the dance. I, which, just, I just would have been disappointed. I'll, I mean, I'll get into like, my list. For me, but, prom is about limos. It's about gowns. It's about like yeah. all that stuff. And they yeah. still did all the other prom, like a prom stuff so you had but it was basically limos, like a the, halloween the, the party. party yeah exactly which like i love to dress up it, it's great but, but i do not, for not want that for my prom not for prom but i did enjoy this like that in this movie well it because, definitely added it in yeah because it's not part your part. prom but yeah. it's fun to watch other yeah. people go through this prom or whatever so yeah so josie's rosalind and orlando guy is orlando from the book they're reading in their shakespeare class with mr coulson um and she gets to wear a very pretty dress very boob boob conscious dress right love that dress i love that i love that look i love it all um i just love prom stuff i just love proms me too go and it's like can you have a high school movie without a prom no i don't think i've watched one with there wasn't bring it, one bring it on right but yeah i don't know it's like you have to check that box it's so funny yeah um so what else what else what else my, my i feel like okay so one of the ways Josie tries to be cool, and this is a common rookie mistake, right? You go to a party and you're like, I'm going to be awesome. And then, oops, you accidentally get drunk. Or in this case, she eats a whole pot brownie. So I have this problem now where obviously I smoke pot and I know what smoking pot is like. But I've noticed going back and watching movies from the 90s or like TV shows for the 90s, even the 2000s, the way that they portray pot on TV is so weird. It's like drunk. It's drunk. It's just like, oh, I'm drunk. Like, that's not what happens when you eat yeah. an entire weed bread. Oh, Sweetie no. and I should know because we both ate a pot brownie before a baby shower. And let me tell you, was it our own personal hell inside of our head? But what were we doing? Just sitting there being like, oh, my God. Like, in our head, I feel we like- weren't like, I'm going to do a crazy day. Right. She so she eats a whole pot brownie, and then that gives her basically her inhibitions are lowered, and she does this crazy dance with a boa like on this reggae stage. That is not what happens. You would be plastered to the couch, being like, "I can't move. Like the floor is moving." That's like what would happen. I feel like it was it road trip. Did, no, they didn't smoke. That was something else. That was a uh, mushroom absence. I think oh. Ab- absence abstinence. <laughs> Absent. <laughs> okay, you're saying Absent. three wrong things. I'm very <laughs> concerned. <laughs> I have trouble with the th sound sometimes. Um, yeah, but I agree. Like that. Like that's. But wrong. also, I mean, but that wouldn't have been like funny if she was like, "Oh, I'll just sit on this couch all night." So they sh- but right. Then they should have you, done like. But then, how do you hiddenly like? Get someone to drink though enough that they would do that. Well, I guess. she is actually 25. So I. F- Wait, but what she- do you mean? Like, because she's basically acting drunk, but she didn't want to drink then. So someone would have had well, to they could give have her alcohol without her knowing. But they could have just rewritten that part in the script for her to actually use her real ID at the to get into the club, and she could have drank for real. But she was around all the other high school kids who weren't drinking, yeah, and then that would have made her cool because they're like, "How did you get alcohol?" That's true. I mean, they weren't drinking the high school kids. I just feel like been. Drew, as a former drug addict, should have been like, "This is not what happens when you eat a pot brownie." Like, I, I don't know. I yeah. just feel feel wrong, but I find it annoying that that's always how it's portrayed in the media. It's either that or the extreme, like couch, couch locked, like, "Oh, can't get up. I can't do anything." Thing, right? So, so much has changed, you guys. So much has changed. But uh, that part always cracked me up. Um, that, yeah, that pop, whole scene that was pop really brownie funny. looked good, though. Like, a president, like a, a real bread. brownie. But it was, like, I'm, frosted on the top. I mean, that whole scene's, like, really funny. So they go to this, like, reggae club, which is, um, it's not even boonya, boonya, 18 plus, because I feel like she's boonya, supposed to be 17. Boonya. So it was just, True. like, no ages. Was but you, like, the juice bar? Yeah, right. So you, like, could drink there, and it was some, like, local reggae band or whatever. So the teacher, who's, like, in love with her, is there with his, like, bitchy girlfriend, and then all the cool kids are there. So then she eats the pop brownie, like, dances on stage, and then she, like, gets home is talking to her friend about it or her brother and her brother her brother yeah and she's like eating this pie and she's like totally out like of, zonked out, yeah, out, out of, of the, the pie tin, dish the pie tin and then all of a sudden she looks down and she's like someone ate my whole pie like how did that happen it's so funny oh <laughs> okay, my god i do that like every day not not when i'm high but just like in general 
Uh, it's just like I'll just forget like I'll have a pile of stuff and they'll be like who fucking ate the last thing and I'm like oh yeah it was me (laughs) it was me like five minutes ago so then like when she got into the club she's under 17 so they give her a stamp so she can't drink and it says like the loser and then she like sleeps on her hands when she gets up in the morning like just the loser part is like stamped on her forehead so she like goes to school like that and then this is what like starts her spiral down everyone's like loser and like laughing at her yeah I can't imagine that that people wouldn't be like oh my god like you have that on your forehead Right. <laughs> Somebody would tell her. It's yes. like, you're telling me when I have like sh- shit in my tooth and like one person tells me to be nice, nobody's going to tell her she has a loser stamped I mean, on her head. Right. Give me a break. Like, people, are, people are cruel. I mean, I, I, mean, I will I say the movie, that the, so the teenagers in this movie are like highly, like the volumes turned up to like 11 on their annoyance with the exception of her friend and, and then the math leads or whatever. Um, everyone else is like extremely annoying and like superficial to the point where it's like, it's obviously false. Like, yeah. Well, they're <laughs> very much very caricatures of popular kids. In yeah. School. Right. And even like the part, like the ones on the side, like the, the together guy and his girlfriend yeah. are like super dumb. And you're like, what's and happening And they're all here? dumb, which you're like, okay, that's yeah, not. Yeah, like, oh, kids are dumb today. I get or it. Or popular kids are all dumb. You know, yeah. like they're, they're taking all that to like crazy levels. I agree. Totally, totally. Um, what else? What else did you want to talk um, about? So question for the folks out there, um, did anyone actually do the condoms on bananas um, sex ed thing? Because that's also used in like every fucking movie and literally never seen so it. So we didn't do it, but I feel like it would have been good. Like I feel like that's a good thing to learn in sex ed, not like how the sperm travels through the like whatever and fertilizes the egg. Obviously, I didn't pay attention. But <laughs> like, don't you feel like practical knowledge of safe sex is a better way to learn? Sure, but I think like dads should be sitting down their sons and being like, "Here's how to use a fucking condom." Like, sure. why do girls have to be because put you know because it's important that everybody knows how to do I'm, it. I know, but like this, it's a very much a thing that guys are like resistant to condoms, and that like women have to even like think about that. It doesn't mean they don't have to think about it, but like guys should be like front on their mind. They should know what they're doing. They should know how yep. to put it on, and it really should be the one thing that women don't have to fucking worry about. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, we didn't do that. We didn't even really have sex ed, so we're, we were screwed. I mean, we had health class and like learned yeah, about that stuff, class. but like it, was, it definitely was not about birth control. It was not about putting condoms on things. Um, we learned about birth control. Different I methods. We, did. I don't, we might have. I don't know. It was just like know. wasn't blatant. Yeah, it wasn't whatever. But that scene is funny because uh, her friend Anita is, like stops by to to see her or something. I'm like, where are you living? Where you think it's okay to just like waltz into a school and be like, hey, friend? And like, then did that lady ever show up? The so real and, lady? Then, and so I swear she did. And maybe this they cut it. Maybe it's cut out of the theatrical version. But I swear to God, there's a part where a woman comes. Is like standing at the window with like a stuffed monkey or something, uh. and then she like closes the 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 shade but now it's i don't remember it happening but i was always so confused like okay where was this yeah, pam was lady <laughs> what the fuck happened to her and why did they already have like the stock of bananas right at the school so maybe the there was a cutout scene. sex ed thing that i remember was in fifth grade when they really teach you about like periods yeah, and, and they show the old stuff movie and the old from videos. like the 70s that has like been like burned into my brain and, but I don't remember the high school stuff at all. Maybe I was like barely paying attention. Okay. Um, so I said that there were two um, like examples of real life examples of people doing that. So the first one we talked about for Footloose when Kevin Bacon, oh, that's I think it. we said, that's the one I was pulled the never been kissed and went back to high school to learn how to be a high school kid again because he was going to be portraying one in Footloose. Very cool. Also, Cameron Crowe, famous director of Almost Famous and... Uh, Elizabeth Town and Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Maguire. Thank you. Um, went back to high school. He was 21, so he wasn't like. I feel like that doesn't count. Super old. But then he parlayed that into a novel and then a screenplay that became Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Huh. Who knew? Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. That. Oh, wow. But like, why are people so far removed from high school that they can't write? They're like, things have changed that right. much in three or four years that you're like, I don't know what it's like. Oh, totally. What is this alien planet? Um, give me a break. Like, right. I could probably still write a meaningful thing about high school today and just like throw a bunch of cell phones in it and be like, yay. Oh, definitely. I'm, I'm sure the themes are the same. And I would get it if you were like go- coming from a time that it was like totally different. Like, yeah, if you went now versus like when you were in high school, but you can't do that because 
I mean, you, you they've been able to do that through like the 30, uh, wait, what's like when you go back and um, you become young again, like a big kind of plot. 13 going on 30. 13 going on 30, but like big. the reverse. What's the reverse one with Matthew Perry and Zach? Efron? 17 again? Yeah. 17 again. So that's the only way you can like go back to high school, like outside of your like decade that you actually went hmm. to high school, hmm. which has been done hmm. as well. Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay. And then like last but not least, this is totally Rufus. Um, let's talk about our first kiss stories. Hmm. Okay. What was yours? Um, okay. Mine was Todd Kaufman. I was a senior guys. I was pretty old for first kiss standards. But uh, it was my first like pseudo boyfriend. He wasn't even like my real boyfriend, which is very sad. But I, I said it was for a long time. And I'm just going to tell you right I now. I thought he was. Really kind of He wasn't. convinced me. He convinced me. I guess it kind of was. Tricked me. I don't think we were like official. Yeah. As sad as that was, we were like casually dating. Mm, in high in school. In high school. But um, we like went on a date. I think we went to Chili's maybe or something. And then we went back to his house and watched The Gladiator. And he pulled the old tickle trick like started like tickling me. I was like, ha, ha, ha. and then he just like, he like Aww. leaned over and That's then we cute. like made out for maybe five seconds and then just like pulled away and like, <laughs> I know. And I think that was it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. 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 It's a pretty big deal in my life. Yeah. Though. I was yeah. very excited yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, mine also, I mean, I think I was a junior, so I was okay. what? 17, 16. Yeah. So sim- similar. Some mature so fast. Um, Our, yeah. But so who's my, uh, who was basically, who was my first real boyfriend. And um, I had talking of, uh, speaking of house parties, I had a week long house party um, during April vacation or something. So he was like over the house all the time. And I had a super big crush on him. And we had been like flirting since like February. Um, we had like one memorable night at the beer pong table in February. And it's just like from that point on, I was just like, wow. Wow, where, it took a long time. An item. But yeah, and then this party in the, over like April vacation or whatever. So then I forget what happened. Like I had slept in my parents' room. And so obviously I wanted him to like come to my parents' room and be like, sleep with me. <laughs> Even though I like never kissed anyone before. and was like oh, way so like nervous. in the deep end. <laughs> so so he never comes into the room and I'm like super sad. I'm like, oh, you're fuck? like going to bed like night. Yeah. And he never comes, but it's probably because he's like super drunk and was like puking or something. So then the next morning we're like hanging around watching TV and then he like goes upstairs to use the bathroom in my mom's room. And then like I go up there too. And then he's sitting on the bed and he's like, come here. And he just like pulls me on the bed and we started like making out. Wow. And it was my first kiss. And then I was like, let's have sex. No, it's kidding. <laughs> um, but it was pretty, pretty, I mean like it was pretty quick. But um, I went to from zero to hero basically. I was like behind my friends in terms of like bases wow. success. And then it was just like, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Is that your whole plan? No, it just it just all happened so yeah. fast. I guess that's you know just takes a little thing to happen. But it was yeah, I, mean, I guess no, it was bad. I mean, it I was like... magical to me because I really liked him. So yeah. if you think about yeah, in that way, I guess I was very lucky, and it wasn't some like gross. Not that Todd Kaufman was gross, but like yeah. I, I think we both lucked out in terms. Of, oh, I feel definitely. like a lot of people's first kiss stories, like "Ooh, I kissed like Norman Schnauzer yeah. behind the school shed because I wanted to get it over with" or something like that. Like at least we had we had pretty good. We lucked yeah. out. I mean, I don't know. I'm like torn, saying like, because this movie is really great about saying like you should wait for something that's like really big and important to you a person to kiss but I don't feel like a kiss you know right and and I think it not necessarily but like there is something that's really nice about that and I'm trying to like think now that I've found someone that I like truly truly love and consider like a true love would I go back and tell myself like don't (laughs) don't waste your time like making out with tons of people no, and like it's about whatever i think it is part of the journey i've yeah. never like regretted like everything that has come before this time um i've regretted some for sure i definitely have not regretted them like all but i think they're like in this day and age where it is now becoming so more normal to be like making out with people who you really don't know or on like, you know, someone you meet online and then you have this connection with, which is still great. And if you feel it, like you feel it. But, um, you know, it, it's... Yeah, there's just got a lot of build up to like the first kiss now, yeah. right? But I hope, but like I would love like for, I mean, your experience is great, right? And because like you li- you really liked him and you were waiting for that and that mm-hmm. was really exciting. And like mine was too. I mean, in the sense that 
I mean, I would like, didn't wasn't head over heels, but I was just excited about like a first boyfriend and that this yeah. was like my first shot. And I had been seeing all my friends and everyone do it for so long. Like people were having their first kisses in like eighth grade. I know. Fuck them. And that was like such a time when you were, you start your, your hormones are getting nuts and you're just like, want to be like, so in that. And I just could never could find that person for me. I liked so many guys and it just never happened. And I was just so jealous all through high school. And then like it finally happened for me senior year. And I was like, yes, this is the way it should be. <laughs> so that that is really special. I mean, I don't know if you should wait till you're 25 to kiss somebody. No, yeah. I think that's excessive. Yeah. Um, and I'm sad that, you know, and, she feels. And, you know, who, yeah. who knows? Did they make it? Did, Did they, make, they it? make it? Probably. I don't know. I mean, it depends. Like, does he move to the city? Like, where's he going? He's packed up. Like, does he move in right away? Because then they probably won't make it. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I think. The jury's out. The jury's yeah. out. I mean, is that a meet cute story or is it like it's sketchy a to tell? Creep story. <laughs> like, I don't know. At their wedding, be like, honey, like, I've loved you since the day I thought you were 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a little creepy. A little creep skate. Um, okay, so now I'd like to go over my list of couples at the dance. So I think I will say that there are some standouts for like good cost, good couples identified at this dance. And I was so shocked at how many I could spot like in the background for like a split second. So this is a pretty good list. Pretty, uh, what's that called? Thorough. Yeah, pretty thorough list here. Uh, but I will say there are other ones where you're like, they're just a person in an old dress, like <laughs> like an old Victorian dress. Like I don't think that is a famous couple. I think you're just like wearing an old costume. So there's a lot of questionables here. So village, the village people. So I like these ones on the outskirts. Go and stag. Let's go as the village people. Um, I don't think it's like couple though, but right. But it's like a group, right? So there's like these fringe kind of couples that are like, things together well, that go it, together it's right it seemed like it wasn't just like romantic couples and like kind of that was the theme because you're like prom or okay, whatever maybe that but then it was yeah. just like people who are known associated together right because one was okay. devil and an angel yeah so that's tortoise and the hare yeah. right yeah right. so i guess these could all be okay so now maybe the, those other ones weren't as bad so you have the barbie barbie and ken so each of the popular girls goes as barbie and ken my friends and i did this we didn't have ken's but we went as barbies in middle school we have a picture i can put po- we can post it on the instagram it was with izzy who was on our spice world podcast so shout out izzy um, Sandy and Danny from Greece. I really liked this one. They were like taking a picture at the beginning of the prom. Love it. Um, I think the people, the guys who are the people in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Hunter, uh, Hunter S. Uh, Thompson, and and who's the woman? Some, there's no woman. Uh, it was like two guys. The guy in like uh, the the hat, the yeah. like weird Hawaiianish yeah. shirt Hunter with the Thompson. cigarette. Yeah. So I think that was one. Um, wow, that's deep. Mary and Joseph. Haha. <laughs> funny. Um, DNA the math the math uh, nerds go as DNA unfortunately they have to wear these like embarrassing blue spandex jumpsuits s- underneath or underneath the DNA over thing Ugh, really embarrassed like I really struggle with that when she takes that off and is like let's have a sex a fun romantic dance oh it's so bad so unflattering on her um, Zeus and Hera I guess um, I d- couldn't really see the girl but I definitely saw a Zeus so I'm assuming okay. it was like another god um, this one I love the I dream of genie genie and the okay. the guy Major Nelson, Major Nelson. that's a good one uh, Robin Hood and Maid Marian very nice olive oil and Popeye cool like it Uncle Sam and Betsy Ross question mark <laughs> maybe I'm not sure who well, the woman is in this situation maybe okay. Uncle Sam's wife whoever Uncle that Sam was Uncle Sam is a fictional character right <laughs> and Betsy Ross is not it's so it's not. like I don't know what they were going with that or who she was supposed to be but whatever uh, Angel and Devil is what you said Zorro and whoever his woman is um, sorry Catherine if she Zeta has a name <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like I'm just like Zorro and woman um, Adam and Eve um, what does this say Note, oh, a um, couple Native Americans. So yeah. Pocahontas and a Native American friend because, hello, <laughs> we know she married we know she John Smith around. or whatever, John Rolfe. So, um, but, you know, that's not accurate. Um, Frankenstein and Frankenstein's Bride. I liked that one. Saw it in the background. Cleopatra and some other Egyptian guy. Again, what about Mark Antony? Not sure. I don't think it was him. Like, it was the other guy was dressed as an also severely well, Egyptian he person. He would have been in like a toga if it was Mark Antony. It wasn't him, yeah. Is it Mark Anthony or Mark Antony? Anthony. Which one is the singer? Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. 
Antony is the historical right. figure. I think people get confused and call the historical one that's Mark Anthony. And I'm like, that's the singer. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. And then Carmen Miranda, who, um, you know, Chiquita Banana, kind of the silhouette mm-hmm. for that. And her banana friend, um, I guess. Banana friend. I don't know. The guy was like also in a They're similar right costume. Ideas. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I feel like they just like found a person. Um, King Kong and the lady from King Kong, who he's in love with. I forget her name. Um, and then this one, question mark, golfers. I'm not oh, sure yeah, about I the golfers. I think they're golf lesbians. If anyone, no, the guy was a guy. There was a guy golfer and a girl golfer. And they were like maybe a couple, like two couples. But there was a guy. I just don't know who he's, who he's supposed to be. For a second, I was like, maybe they were tennis players. And it was Billie Jean King. And like they battled the sexist guy. No. no? I think there was definitely golf. Because they're wearing like shorts and like yeah, golf I just saw vests. Visors. Um, but yeah, but that's those are all the ones I wrote down. Yeah, pretty good. I don't know if I saw any other ones. Um, the Drew Barrymore is the Shakespeare character mm-hmm. Rosalind Rosalind Orlando, Orlando from what play? As you like as it. As you like it. Good one. Good one. Um, yeah. Were there any others? What would I be? Mm. I really like the Sandy and Danny one. Mr. Miyagi and Daniel Son. Yeah, that's a little creepy. <laughs> I mean, right on the nose for teacher-student relationship. Right. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I would think. I need to think about it. I could come up with something creative, something cool. Yeah, th- there's a lot out there, and you could really, you know, expand yeah. it. But yeah, pretty pretty cool theme. Pretty cool theme. Yeah, good job, okay. Josie. Good one. Good one. Uh, anything else? Yeah, that's all cool. she wrote. But yeah, good back to school reminder. You know, of yester years. Good times. Um, if you have thoughts, come find us on Twitter at the Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge Santos. Thank you as always for listening. Bye. Bye. School Rape Artist. Josie Rosie.